Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. On today's episode, we're going to follow up on a question from the Home Garden Field Trial and put one of my practices to the test. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what rock dust and leaves are able to bring in the form of elements or beneficial nutrients to the soil. So what I've done is I've sent in samples of rock dust and leaves to the lab for analysis. The leaves are fall leaves from deciduous trees in my area. I then consulted a number of experts in order to ensure that we not only had the correct data, but how to interpret it and present it to you today. One of the core claims of rock dust is that it adds a wide variety of elements to your soil. Fall leaves also fall under this category of mineral accumulators. What happens is the tree actually puts its roots into the parent material, which is minerals, brings those minerals up into the plant, and deposits them in the leaves. When the deciduous fall leaves come down, that deposits it in the organic layer, further adding minerals and elements to your soil. Because fall leaves and rock dust both claim to be mineral accumulators for your garden soil, I've sent two of the leading brands of rock dust and leaves from four local trees, birch, poplar, apple, and Russian olive. In order to analyze for trace minerals, Maxim Analytics had to start with a strong acid digestion in order to run it through for the analysis. What this does is it breaks everything down to its component materials, giving you the elemental results for both the available and bio-unavailable elements. Plants need more than nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to live. This analysis has given us the beneficial and the essential elements to life, and included in there is the remainder of the elements that may or may not in fact be needed. On to the trace minerals assessment. Remember, for the number to be statistically valid, it needs to be more than 10 times the reportable detection limit on the analysis. Once we've determined which results are statistically relevant or not, we need to compare them against each other. I'm using a tool today called the relative percent difference in order to do that. It's a fairly widely accepted method that uses the following equation. Once you've calculated the RPD, if the number is over 100, there's a strong level of confidence that these two numbers are in fact statistically different. Before comparing rock dust A to leaves, the following were statistically irrelevant in both samples. Selenium, cobalt, copper, and molybdenum. In similar ranges are calcium, magnesium, manganese, potassium, and nickel. Rock dust did contain more iron and sodium, while leaves contain more boron, phosphorus, sulfur, and zinc. When comparing rock dust B to leaves, the following were the statistically irrelevant numbers. Sodium, cobalt, molybdenum, and selenium. Rock dust B and leaves had similar concentrations of calcium and phosphorus, while rock dust B had more iron, magnesium, manganese, copper, and nickel, and leaves had more boron, potassium, sulfur, and zinc. So the elements analyzed that are not contained within the essential or beneficial categories, there was only three that actually had hits that were statistically relevant. Strontium had similar range in both the leaves and the rock dust, while rock dust had more aluminum and barium. So what does this all mean? When you compare rock dust A to fall leaves, the fall leaves in fact have more beneficial and essential elements contained within them. In the two cases of iron and sodium that rock dust had more, the fall leaves had enough iron to constitute a positive addition, leaving just sodium as the only element in this list that rock dust had more than the fall leaves of. When comparing rock dust B to fall leaves, they essentially had the same spread, with the exception of rock dust was missing boron, while copper and nickel were missing from the fall leaves. Of the nearly one half of the elements measured, but do not fall in the essential or beneficial elemental categories to plant growth, most of them were not found in any sample. And of the three that were, there's no evidence to suggest that plants, nor humans, actually require them. 
and in fact, some of them can be quite harmful. In summary, fall leaves and rock dust have a good spread of the essential and the beneficial elements within them. However, neither of them have a full complement of this list, and rock dust contains some trace elements that may in fact be harmful. In order to make up the deficiency in trace elements, likely a well-rounded compost will contain everything you require. Leaves do have an advantage over rock dust. Minerals take a very long time to break down and enter into the nutrient cycle, whereas the minerals and elements within the fall leaves have already been taken up by a plant and incorporated into organic or bioavailable forms, meaning these fall leaves, when you apply them to your garden, the leaves will break down and these trace elements will be able to enter the nutrient cycle a lot faster. The results will vary depending on the type of deciduous fall leaves that you use. However, this evidence supports my practice of using fall leaves to not only add organic material, but the trace elements that are essential for healthy plant development. And it supports the fact that you can use a free, usually abundant, local resource to do this without the need for purchasing a product. Simply add fall leaves through compost, mulch, or mold, and you'll be adding these trace elements to your garden soil, further enhancing it. I would like to take the time to thank Maxim Analytics for not only running these samples, but helping with the analysis. Not only am I going to continue the trials in my garden, I'm going to add a poor soil trial location to the mix next season. In order to continue to test my garden assumptions and practices, I've submitted a number of other samples to the lab. This includes some of the free and local resources that we've been speaking about. As these results become available, I'll post them in videos and put them in the playlist appearing on the screen now. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.